I'm going to show you the basics because there's still not enough video tutorials on using the Mac and using various software which is really popular so let's get down to the basics you can download the demo version if you want and just play around with it and the first thing you get is this little new task window so you can choose what you want to convert so the first option is my Mac so I can convert anything on my Mac from an image file to a Word document to a PDF it's up to you if I come to the right here select show all so we can see everything we can convert to a portable document format to Word, to Excel, or to PowerPoint, even ebooks, FB2 documents, images you want to convert to and convert to the website HTML as well. Just want to show you, see to the right the little cogs here settings, tap on that as you hover over and you can choose exactly how you want to convert. So you might want to do a SAT copy. Now what I want to do here, because you'll be looking at this and go, which one do I choose? SAT copy, editable copy, format your text. Well when you open these little windows, bottom left hand corner, select that question mark and it will bring you up instructions on what each one does. I like to produce a document that is formatted identically that I can work off. So the pictures we put where I want, everything will be exactly identical. We'll it do its best to do it identical, but it will be converted into a text format. Now you might prefer editable copy, it produces a document whose formatting might differ slightly from that of the original. So a document might produce in some mode is easy to edit. So it just makes life much more easier to edit for you than it would with your SAT copy. And again you've got formatted where it says it remains fonts, font size and power, but does not retain the exact spacing or location of the objects on the page. So you've got to determine whether or not you just want a formatted page that you want to work with. And again you can have the plane which does not retain any text formatting at all. So in this case I'm going to be using the exact copy, so I'm going to close that. So just remember that, bottom left hand corner to access. Do I want to keep pages and numbers and headers? Yes I do. If I've got multiple pages I will anyway, so that way I know where the page numbers are and the headers and footers at the bottom. Not all have headers and footers of course. Do you want to keep line breaks and hyphenations? Again you can choose. I, I don't want my line breaks or hyphenations so I'm going to uncheck that. And I want to keep pictures if they exist as well. Again if you don't tap it and you don't have to keep those images. Image quality. Obviously the higher the quality, the better the scan, the bigger the file. But I like to keep balanced. If you're lacking space on your Mac, you can always go low. But you're going to lose a lot of quality, so try and keep it balanced. Click advanced settings, and you can choose paper size. I prefer automatic, so it automatically recognises the size. But if there's something you're working with, and it's not quite recognising it right, so you might choose an A4. So you can choose the correct size you want. And then you can choose whether to tick increase paper size to fit content. So you might get a bit of distortion on that, so bear that in mind when you're doing that. Also, you can have a custom size, not the default one. So you can add your own custom size in there if you want as well. I want to keep text and background colours, but remember, I do notice this. If you say, you're, say you scan off a book and the book had a background a different colour, say it was like a light grey and the text was black, there might be an issue with the background colour that you can't really pick up the text properly. Or say you're referencing stuff in a degree, you might want to copy that so you can then cite your work. Obviously not plagiarism because you will be citing it, of course. So you can uncheck that so it doesn't cause any issues with the text. Highlight on certain characters. Now, any characters it's not sure about, doesn't think should be there or something's wrong, it will highlight them. Now, that can be good, but I find that it also highlights forward slashes sometimes and plus signs, thinking they shouldn't really be there when it comes to grammar, for example. And that can be annoying. But again, if you're using certain symbols in that, then you could leave that ticked. So, but I'm going to untick that. I don't want that. And keep line numbers. If there's any line numbers, I definitely want to keep them. Now, I'm going to click Next. And it automatically come up with this window and it's going to ask me what I want to scan. So I'm going to look for a quick document, a PDF, a booklet to scan. You can do the same and look for something to scan. Before I do, I want to come to here quickly again. We've got here Enhance Image. What this does is pre-processing before it actually scans. It will enhance the images for you. Or you can split facing pages or you can even detect page orientation. I tend to leave that on because it automatically turns around the page for me. So I don't have to do it manually. But again the choice is yours. So I'll click all files and find a PDF. And click open. Might take a while to scan. I'm going to stop that. So I'd have to go through all the scanning with you. So I can just show you quickly. And there's the first page there that you can see. So that's the first PDF that I've scanned. I want to come to the left here, draw a text area. This will be an area that it sees as a text. 
table so if it's any tables you draw a table area there so it sees it as a table and picture again and then you've got background image so if it's a background image in that you can draw around that to tell that'd be fine with it's a background image and to format it properly and that goes for recognition area so draw recognition areas the areas that you want to be recognized so for example if I click on it I've left button drag it around they're all the areas you want to be recognized so you can choose what you want to be recognized command set to undo that got an option here as well called read so if I click read it will then reread recognize the document again I'm going to click stop again instead of recognizing them all so what it's doing is when it recognizes them all I go through them all and you see it starts giving these colors now I'm going to come back up to here again that sees that as a text area green so anything green it sees as a text so if I come down here it sees this as a text as well I'm not quite sure whether that equation will come out correctly as it sees it as text the way it's formatted so what I could do is come to left here and select draw picture area come over it hold the left button and create a rectangle around you want as a picture and image so now when I convert that you get all the green in text but I'll have that bit as an image so it doesn't distort it and again you can choose whether it's a table or text and choose which option you want also if I come down here you can use this just to select objects or you might want to delete areas as well so you can click on that hold the left button and choose to delete an area if you want as well you've got add area parts you can actually add an area that you want to and then I could add an area there if I want as well hold the left so now I've added an area to that document that I might need also I can cut the area part if I want so if I click on it I can cut hold the left button create a rectangle around it and I can cut that away as you can see here you can split tables as well so horizontally or add a vertical separator or remove separators you've used and you can also emerge selected cells so that's good for Excel and tables so if I come to the right here on your ribbon image editor I can also edit that image if I want if I drag along there so you can see more hold left button I'll drag that in so see on the right here we've got this queue so you can images that distortion this should improve them for you and you can choose whether to do all your pages or odd even or selected pages photo corrections that's more for photos obviously reduce ISO noise should sharpen up the document for you let's give it a go anyway so I'm going to choose current page only and select apply oh yeah that's sharpening it up a bit also you can use the correct perspective you can line the grid with the text lines so if I hold drag that up I think you see where I'm going with this one so corner of the pages so you can make sure that's all in perspective for you if you want as well also rotate and flip so obviously you can rotate and flip your document the only one thing downside with this option is editing it it takes a while I don't know whether it's my Mac might be a bit slow to actually flip them and rotate them it might be quicker on your Mac but mine is about six years old now I'm running eight gigs of RAM but I'm only running an i5 then I've got split pages so we can actually split pages look so if I select horizontal or vertical and you see that line going across so now if I click here tap once I can now split it by clicking the split button if I want as well and that will split it for me again you can do multiple pages look by choosing odd pages or even so you don't have to do them one by one or you might want to split automatic but I'm going to clear that again you can crop parts out you might not want so I drag it and then I can choose to crop that out by clicking crop image and you can crop the rest out and leave what you need next is image resolution so you might want to change the image resolution so again you can choose to resize that image and choose the resolution you want there you can invert colors so you can make the background black in this case and the foreground white that would be good with people with visual impairment so I'm going to invert colors I'm going to do it to the current page and there you go actually I'm going to go back to rotate and flip turn that back around it would be helpful wouldn't it right so let's go back to invert colors I'm going to put that back by clicking invert colors again and that will invert the colors you see opposite again then we've got brightness and contrast you can add if you want 
and last of all you can erase parts so because I click on erase I could hold the left button and I might want to erase materials or methods and it should then get rid of that text for me or image or whatever you want to delete command said I'm undoing I brought that back so there's your image editor there so I'm going to come back off there again you can come down here and select your options different pages down here as well to your left bottom left hand corner you've got a settings button again and I can choose whether to read pages, reanalyze them or I can select all pages if I want I can choose to export the pages I want even email or I can delete pages by clicking that and I can choose what I want to delete there also I can rotate the pages and again edit page image and change page order if I want so if I click change page order I can change which order I want them to be in so I've moved pages to new position in document and then I can choose swap odd or even book pages restore original page order after duplex scanning so again you've got full control over that also at the top we have a share option so I click on the share option and you can share that by clicking email and you see the first option has got here PDF it will create a PDF document that can be viewed and edited with a PDF application so bear that in mind it can be edited you can choose to have the text under the page image or you might want text and pictures only so again you can choose your formatting options there and again we looked at that earlier keep page numbers and headers and you might want to compress it now bear this in mind if you compress because remember you're emailing so you don't want a massive image do you but PDFs are normally small anyway shouldn't be an issue and again if you want to go into more you can go down the bottom and go font settings and choose what you want there so you can do that with Word and Excel and PowerPoint and even your ebooks and other formats like rich text format you might want to use so that's a quick option to share as well so there's a file on the Mac that you can convert quickly and easily I could go to export as well if I want to and I could use the same option as share and export it that way but what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to new task and click don't save now I'm going to click the back button there top right hand corner now currently I've just turned on my Epson WF2750 it's an all in one scanner it's got a document feeder and a flatbed but I'll be using a flatbed today and I put a document in there to confer it's got a table in it as well so I want to choose my Epson now when you install your scanner it should show up there if you've got a problem then there might be a problem with what's called your Twain which stands for so make sure you download the latest driver for your Mac for that ok once you've selected your scanner I will need to choose what I'm going to scan to. I could do PDF, Word, any other formats I showed you before using a document on your Mac. Select Show All. Again, you've got more formats you can use. So I'm going to click back. I'm going to scan to Word. Now again, to the right, you see we've got little options that we can change for that. I want to set Copy. Again, I'm going to keep headers and footers, and you can choose your options there. And I'm going to keep pictures. There is no pictures, but I'm thinking it might see that table accidentally as an image rather than as a text or table. So I'm going to leave that on there. And again, if you need to, you can go find settings and choose what you want. So I'm ready to go. I'm going to click next, and it should automatically connect with my scanner and start scanning. It takes a few seconds. Now this is your scanner interface built into Abbey Fine Reader. Now I told you before, I've got two options. I've got flatbed or document feeder on top of the scanner. So I can put multiple documents in and automatically scan it one page after another. As I'm using a flatbed today, I won't be using that, but bear that in mind. Now if you are using a flatbed, this could be useful. You might have to say scan 30 pages. And the last thing you want to do is put the book down on the flatbed scanner click scan put the book down so on so what you can do here is you choose scan multiple pages with pause so when you start scanning it will scan that document and then it will wait for as many seconds as you want so you say five seconds you're pretty quick or less so every five seconds it will start scanning again so you can just stand there or sit there and continuously scan each page one after another quickly and then when it's finished you can hit finish scanning and it does a lot for you all in one so bear that in mind, but I'm only doing the one document, so I'm going to untick that. Colour depth, well I'm just doing black and white for this, it's a black and white document. And you see when I choose it, watch. 
pulls out the text better, doesn't it, with black and white, because that's what I'm mostly concentrating on. Or you might choose you want grayscale. So in this case, black and white looks good to me. There's no colour in that document. Dots per inch. Now, 200's low. 300's default. That's how many dots and resolution you've got per inch. So that would be the quality of the scan. Now, 300's normally okay, I find, unless you've got really small text. Then I'd go for small font, 600. The scan's slower, the file's bigger, but the quality's better. I haven't got a 1200 dots per inch scanner, so I can't show you that, but have a little play with that yourself. Do I want to scan the whole area? Yes, I do, but you could choose not to. It might have Pacific, you might use, for example, that size R4, and you can see the little square there. So then you can choose whether, see the little hand comes up, hold that, but I can drag that where I want. Or I can drag the corners in and out how I want. Again, current selection, I could, or I could go entire area, which I'm quite happy with. Or you can change it to centimetres and inches and choose what you want, either way underneath. Now I could do a preview to double check that to have a look, but I'm okay with that. Then at the bottom we've got your enhanced images if you want, split facing pages and detect page orientation. I tend to use that and the reason is it turns it around for me automatic so I don't have to keep flipping it. Okay, let's have a little go then. So now I want to select the scan button and let it scan that document. Now I've done the scan, click finish import. It's going to take a bit longer on mine because it is wireless as well, so bear that in mind guys and girls. Let's put scan in. I'm going to scan that to... I'm going to save that to my desktop I think. I'm always losing stuff, I'm diabolical. And there you go, there's my document in the Word documents. And let me have a little look. It's done well, look, it's kept the bullets fine, hasn't it? And let's have a look. Yeah, it looks beautiful. So obviously if I go into it, I can delete, edit and do what I want with the text. So let's go back to Happy Fine Reader and close that Word document. And let's see what Happy Fine Reader has done to convert it. And you can see, see the green there? So if I hover up to here, it's seen that as a text area of green. If I come down, it's seen that as a table area which is purple or mauve. So you see how it analyzes it. Now it could be really useful, so bear this in mind, if it doesn't pick something up and you're thinking, well actually no, that's not a table or that should be a table, you can click on what you want here and then hold the left button, create a rectangle around you want. So I've made sure that is a table, which it is anyway. So there you go, so it's color coded stuff for you. Now if there's any issues, you change stuff, you need just to rescan it, analyze it. Click the read button at the top and let it just rescan it in Abbey Fine Reader again to check that it sees everything as it is. And again, don't forget, if you go to Image Editor, you can change the image there, edit it any way you want as well. Come back out of there. And last of all, go to Inspector, you've got a few options there. So for example, you can put the document information in there. Resolution there by modifying or adding comments. So I could click Modify, it'll take me back to Image Editor. And you've also got your Area Inspector. If I click on here, as you see, it's numbered. If you tap in them, you can change the number on them there in order number. I mean that's useful when you actually convert a document using the tab to tab through a document and it will tab in the order you put them in and click inspector to close. There's a basis of using Abbey Fine Reader. Don't forget you can choose your language there as well if you want but also if you come up to Fine Reader here you've got all your options at the top here including preferences. So if I go to general you can change your mind preferences there for general and any options you don't know remember Click the little question mark, will bring up a window and it tell you exactly what those options do for you as well. Also you've got your editing options, so if you want to do spelling and grammar you can. And you can even use the speech back option. There. So you can click on the beginning of the text that you've converted and it will read back for you. Again you can reanalyze your pages or delete all areas. And these are the options here. As you, you can also access down the left here as well. So there's some basics to get you up and running on Abbey Fine Reader on the Mac. I hope that was a bit of a help. Thanks for watching.